Hey everybody! Fancy me. <laughs> You're right, that was me. Again. Fancy, Fancy me and you here. <laughs> nice intro. <laughs> okay. So I'm Dr. Ellie and my last name is Portisef, but I just go by Dr. Ellie and we are here at Memorial Hearing, which is in Houston, which is an audiology clinic. Audiology is a big word. Some people don't even never even heard of it. Some people think it's ideology. Some people think we're a cardiologist. Yes. <laughs> But what it is is a study of hearing and balance. And so here in this particular office, we mostly just deal with hearing loss, treating hearing loss, and loss of earwax removal. Yes. <laughs> I'm a native Houstonian, but I was not born here. Although I like to kind of say that, that bumper sticker, I was not born in Texas, but I got here as fast as I could. I think that applies to me. Um, I was born in Iran. Some people say Iran. And so that makes me Persian or Iranian. Most Persian people say that. Actually, questions I get from my patients. Yeah. Because my name plate on my desk, you know, it's Dr. Ellie Porisef, and I can't, I can't even count how many times somebody's like, as soon as I see this face, I'm like, I know what they're about to ask me. I'm like, it's Persian. Like, I, it's like they, they, they're trying to figure out the name. All nice. aggressive though. No, like you know, funny. Not aggressive. More like. No, why does that do? Why does that do? Believe he couldn't pronounce it. Actually, I have no problem, like yeah. you know, telling people my background because I, because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No, I think it's something uh, to be proud of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. It, and so, and you know, everybody in the United States is an immigrant. I don't know. I, I, just, I think that that need for success. Not that, not that everybody's not wanting to be successful, but I mean, I feel like I almost didn't have a choice, like in the matter. Uh, there was no are you going to go to college? It was what college are you going to go to? It wasn't like, you know, it, it was not, it was just not, not, nothing even, it was unspoken. I didn't even have a choice. Not that it was like forced upon me. It was just one of those things. Like I know my parents left a country with their family. My mom never got to see her mom uh, again after she passed away, didn't even get to go to the funeral. You know, you, you as a child, you see these things happen and you know that they gave up, literally gave up a lot. So you, you you just do the best you can and and that Iran. yeah I was five when I left Iran I have memories of it I even remember my <clears throat> plane trip to America <laughs> and I remember they played Bambi and I remember I had a banana for the first time it was delicious but that's how you know you're rich when it was that long ago and they had TVs on the airplane <laughs> that's how you know you're rich because when I was a kid we flew like one time ever right maybe twice I think it's and they had no TVs on you know what though I think international <laughs> international <laughs> We'd have a TV in our house when I was five. International different. No, I remember the UHF. I remember having that UHF, VHF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like four Just channels. And the antenna. I got it. I've been there. I know. Chat. But, I, yeah, it was, um, I remember going to school, like, kindergarten. Maybe, maybe kindergarten it was here. I don't and know. So Whatever wait, you are. Your family flew over and then y'all moved into Houston? Yeah, so my dad's been here since the 60s. He went to University of Houston for um, his bachelor and master's degrees. So he had already had some link, some like, um, I guess you could say foundation in Houston. He actually... Uh, and it, education extremely important in your family with your dad having that higher level Oh yeah, he still wears his giant U of H ring on his hand. Like, yes, education is very important. True, true Persian redneck right there. <laughs> He kind of is, you know, yeah, he actually boy. sounds like a Persian I, Texan. I've never been, there, I've never been to her parents' house where her dad didn't offer me a beer. Yeah, he's like, beer? Oh, and then if you say yes to the beer, he's like, he follows it up with frosty mug. Yeah, I left, yeah. With, a, I left with a whole bottle of vodka one time. Oh, yeah, I remember that day. Well, that looks like, do not give Shane vodka. That's memorable, vodka. memorable day for like, me. Do not <laughs> Shane's a big guy. I wanted to move here. So it wasn't like they were moving to some weird land, but it's still leaving their home. It's still leaving their mom, their dad, their brothers, their sisters, their cousins, their neighbors, their home, their Everything actual home. We moved from a beautiful, I remember as a child, I remember because it was like blue velvet, it was like Parisian looking. Persians love to kind of like have Parisian decor, like everything's all gold. I love it. Yeah. 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 What, what is Parisian? I'm sorry. Par Paris. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Very Paris looking. So like I remember the furniture was like all like beautiful and like blue velvet with gold trimming and my mom even like boasts about how I had my, she had a separate um, like clothes washer just for me oh. to wash my clothes separately than theirs. And they left all of that, and we we ended up in a one bedroom apartment here, in Elmo. 
<laughs> North wow. Houston. Um, and I, I mean, it was for them, I'm sure tough, but for me, I just didn't know better. I didn't care. I didn't, I just got to play outside and I had a good time. Mm. But I, I, I distinctly remember going to school and not knowing any English. I was like five and I remember speaking Farsi to everybody. <laughs> and I remember, I remember the odd looks from the kids. I do, I really remember this one boy. He was like, I just remember him going, and I just remember thinking, like, I was still in Iran, and that was my cousin. I remember just talking to him, but obviously he didn't know what I was saying. And my mom, they were trying to put me in ESL, but it didn't make sense, because a lot of the ESL at the time was just geared towards Spanish-speaking students. Yeah, because Persian is such a rare language. There's yeah. not a lot of Persian. And then it sounds it's, like nothing. Like, yeah. most languages are derived from Latin, derived it's from like a mix English, of, derived... A mix of, like, probably Israeli, a bunch of ch and then like a bunch of shh. It took me like two months to learn English uh, fluently in it because I was only five. Yeah. That's it. So it was over. Uh, but then I still understood Farsi because my parents speak it to each other. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, my mom always speaking to me in Farsi and my sister and I like rebelling against her and be like, we're in America. We don't speak Farsi. And she's like, oh, yeah, you will. Yeah, you do. <laughs> You know, things like it was just an argument, like a non star argument going on. But of course, I'm glad I know that second language and um, kind of know Spanish. I can, guess I can say Oh, yeah, she, oh, yeah, she knows it. See, si. yeah. yeah. Quito. Just kidding. Qu <laughs> kidding. Uh, so, yeah, that's the childhood part of me. Now, growing up, fast forward, school, better get A's, no B student. I mean, literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. no no B. Well, you're, yeah. you talked yeah. about your dad having a uh, master's degree yeah. and a minor and then your mom my mom has her I think I uh, have bachelor in microbiology yeah and she would have kept going my mom you just get a chance you're, she's you're so going. smart you're my going. mom is a like a forever student Genetics. I've hey. never Genetics. seen somebody enjoy studying and like learning as much as my mother like she did it like and the only thing that just stopped her is because she moved here and some of the stuff didn't doesn't translate uh, like scholastically she, she couldn't keep going her. yeah so she, but like, as far as growing, I mean, I, interestingly enough, my mom even at some point, well, way before audiology in my life, she was learning ASL, American Sign Language. Yeah. I remember her having a book and she's, she's like, awesome. you know, doing this. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just learning sign language. I was like, why? She's like, because. And then one day I cut, she comes home with needles and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm learning Chinese herbal medicine and acupuncture. I'm like. <laughs> Why? She's like, well, because, Genetic. you know, <laughs> just because, like, she why not? Like, but you, so you, you have a lot of your mother's traits, a lot of, one of your mother's traits is like the ability to retain knowledge, because you're kind of that way, like, you like this and that, and then you pull a lot of stuff in. I, I envy her thirst for it, though. Mm. I feel like I did what I did, and I enjoyed it while I was doing it, um, but I, I don't know, I don't know if I would, she's, she's something else. She is. <laughs> She's and, and so, so growing up, who, what, what was the difference in the relationship with your mom and your dad? Like, so, was it traditionally you spent more time with your mom? Yeah, my mom, um, because we were, you know, I guess you could say new here, and she, she spent all of her years through my middle school years home. So I never even experienced ever having a babysitter. My mom was a stay-at-home mom until I was in middle school. At that point, I was old enough to, my sister's three years younger than me. So uh, we were old enough to then start going to, to bringing ourselves home and, you know, you know, letting ourselves in the house in middle school. And that's when she started working for a school district. Um, but until then, I mean, we spent all of our time with our mom, like, after, after class and um, on the weekends, my mom and dad. My dad worked. I think that's part of the reason why I like to stay up. I, I'm now actually going to sleep at a decent time now that I've met this fellow here. Uh, but I used to like easily stay up till two in the morning every night for as long as I can remember until like a year and a half ago. And a part of that I think is because I would stay up really late because my dad would work. He was, um, an, he's an engineer by you know by degree, and he was like a professor at one of those like micro technology institute type things. And he had a double shift where he would teach morning class at night. So because it was kind of far, he would just stay there. And sometimes he wouldn't get home till like 10, 10.30. I remember just waiting up every night for him to walk through the door. And that was like a non-negotiating thing for me as a child. I was already like, no, I'm staying up. 
So that was it. I was up till like 11 to wait for my dad. And I just got used to staying up. Like, there was no bedtime. And that's some other, like, sometimes with Persian parents, I think, like, they don't, I've never been grounded in my life. I don't even, I didn't even know what, I only knew what that word meant because my American friends were getting grounded. I didn't know what that meant. Like, not like they didn't punish us, but it wasn't like that. It was just like, you do what you're told, you know better. Oh, yeah. You don't even get punished, to, like, officially. But, and, but yeah, sometimes, like, my, I think sometimes when you have a passive parent, you might be, like, my mom was a pretty passive person. Don't get me wrong. She, she knew when to lay down the law, for sure. But when you have a kind of a passive parent, I feel like sometimes it, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, the child becomes the more like more aggressive. So I remember just like my sister and I, you when know, I stayed up late, we did what we want. We were still good kids, yeah. very much so. But we were, we kind of like kind of did what we wanted. So would you say you got work ethic from your mom and dad? <clears throat> yeah, I definitely got work ethic from my mom and dad because I mean my dad, my dad when everything went south with his career. He then turned, just started a business and started doing remodeling. I mean, random, but he was a remodeler all of a sudden, dealing with homes and painting and this and that. And my mom, she just never, she's just never stopped. She's always done something. So even as a kid, going back as far as maybe fifth grade or sixth grade, I remember kind of having that. Not hustler mentality. Oh hustler yeah, mentality. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> things done. So I, hustle, I yeah. would like. I think back then there was like a Sam's, not Costco, but it's Sam's. I remember just like begging them to get me like a giant box of Tootsie Roll pops, and I remember just wrapping them up with a bow and selling them at school. And you weren't supposed to do that, but I did. And I remember my friend's next door neighbor's dad was like the vice president of Xerox or something like that at the time, and I remember like having it thousands of copiers to access to photocopies. And I made my own newspaper, and I would sell it at school for 25 cents, and I had, like, a gossip column. And oh, yeah. Just random stuff that, like, I just thought it was entrepreneurial. Yes. And I don't even realize, now I realize that's what it is. I mean, you can say... Well, graduate, what did graduation look like? Were you in the upper part of the class? Yeah, I was the top 10%, um, which is, I think, why I was able to get into the University of Texas. Um... So that was the good. segue wasn't straight to UT from college. No, I ended school. up going to University of Houston, not because of not being able to get into UT. I didn't even apply. Um, it was more like, yeah, I went to U of H. Um, it was more like, honestly. From from conversation with your parents, it was because they didn't want you to Yeah, leave. it was. Oh. And that's the thing. My parents didn't realize how great of a school University of Texas was. They didn't realize. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, still is. It's not. It's better now. But um, they just, especially my dad, for some reason, he had this weird thing about me leaving. He's U of H alma mater. He's like, you might yeah. as well. Yeah. He's good enough for me. And then I just was like, I, I remember telling them, I remember these words. I was like, I just want the college experience. Because when you go to U of H, granted, I was living in a dorm and I ended up being an RA. I was a dorm mom. I was getting paid. I got my toy, my, my yeah. If somebody's watching this, I was the dorm mom on floor five of the... South Tower, North Tower, one of the towers, the one on the right. And you know who you are. I did not write oh. you out. Just oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I, yeah. So I was, I had a good living at in U of H when I was there um, because I was living in a dorm. I was part of a sorority. I got myself as involved as I could so that I didn't feel like I was just driving back and forth or that my parents were 25 minutes away. I didn't want, but I remember just telling them I want that real college experience. And I remember they were. You know, like old school Persian, like what does that mean? What does that mean? What, you know, what do you mean by that? What do you have to have to have a real college experience? I'm like, no, just like, you know, just, I don't know, not 20 minutes away from you guys. And they're like, what's wrong with that? We give you food. You know, just kind of guilting you. And so, I but, don't know. But a little bit at that time, did you know what you wanted to do? I was, to I have been lost. It didn't, it took me, that's why it took me almost 10 years to graduate. Um, this program is more like eight to nine years. I had an extra year and a half because I was so lost. Um, I did not know what I wanted to do. I knew I was wanting to be in the medical program. In high school, I was part of HOSA, which is Health Occupation Students of America. And I was one of two people that was in it. And I remember wearing scrubs. And I remember the principals would call me Doc. Like, you go down the hallway, like, what's up, Doc? And like, I already had that, like, okay, I'm going to be in the health field. This is, this is me. This is who I'm going to be. I'm already, like, people are already referring to me as Doc in 12th grade. So I, you know, that starts to instill some little bit of that in you that you're like, okay, this is where I'm going, and I knew it was interesting to me. 
But then at some point, I remember me and this kid went to this, um, I think it was like Baylor College of Medicine. I don't know. It was a room full of cadavers. Remember him touching there. the bodies yes. with his hands? Yeah. And I'm just smelling like there's formaldehyde smell. Error. There was like the bodies. <laughs> and I remember being like. Does that bug you, Crystal? No. No. <laughs> She's I, a cheek. I, I didn't get it. You should have been in a, I, I was like, no, no, no. I out. <laughs> out. But, okay. And then, then there was another like phlebotomy, which I know you like your phlebotomy, but I could not do blood. I can't even watch my blood being drawn. So that's not when I knew pretty either. blood. Even though it took me a long time to get to audiology, I knew health field, yes. Blood, no. no. So then I was like optometry, uh, physical therapy. Um, great fields. Optometry, physical therapy. There's one other one I can't remember now. But anyway, I, I tried everything out. I tested it all out. Optometry was a lot of physics. And at University of Texas, it was it was hard. I'm not going to lie. Like I couldn't the physics and the physics lab, my, my professors were like those genius types where they, they're they just so smart they and the they book. don't know how to teach. Yeah, uh, yeah. I had a ton of, I mean, the audiology guy wrote the book off of Dr. Martin. Oh, my yeah, professor. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my professor. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of a lot of professors that wrote the book on whatever it was. Yeah, optometry was out the window pretty quickly. And then uh, physical therapy, I liked the anatomy and physiology, yeah. but I didn't like the like PE type classes that went along oh, with yeah. PT. Um, kinesiology, so I was yeah, like, yeah, I, don't wanna, yeah, I feel like I'm going to be a, training to be a coach. Yeah, yeah. So that was out. Um, and then my friend, uh, Dr. Selena Oliveira. Yes! <laughs> you went to school with her, right? Yes. Yeah. Throughout knowing her, her dad uh, has his own, his own clinic. And then she's like, I think I'm going to take some intro to audiology classes. And um, what's the other one with the... Oral rehab? No, yeah. it was intro to audiology and... Uh, no, oh. I, oh my, God, my brain's just not working right now. But it was another tech class, like a neuro, neuroscience tech oh, class. Yeah. And I thought that was the first time in my life I was interested in something. I remember studying at UT and falling asleep. I don't even know, randomly, I would just find myself, my head, my head inside the middle of my book. And I remember drool tearing holes in my pages. Been there. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? But that's how bored I was with some of the stuff I was studying. Oh, and I was uh, I just, I remember audiology was the first time that literally I was like, oh my God, this is actually this is interesting. And the fact that you get to learn it in undergrad, yeah. which is like, like, you don't know what it means to be a lawyer when you're an undergrad. You don't know what it means to be an optometrist because you're just learning physics, right, right. not optometry. You don't know what it means to be a lot of fields in undergrad until being able to take a intro to audio, audiology class, it, you can have a little taste I mean, it was like 10 classes, actually, but just the intro to audiology already gave me a taste of it, yes. and I liked it. I think you would agree. It is. Um, so, yeah, UT was an experience, and then getting to get back into the University of Texas um, for my graduate program, I applied everywhere. I applied to, like, Texas Tech, University of North Texas, Lamar, some places in Cali, but as soon as I was able to get back to UT Austin, I just figured... I'm going to stay in Austin. I love Austin. I mean, everybody yeah, loves Austin. Everybody. And so that was it. I, I, was there for almost, I was there for almost 10 years. Yeah. It was a good experience. And I had a, you know, job and everything out, out of college. But one thing about Austin, I don't know if it's still like that. If anything, it's probably worse, is there's a high cost of living, and they don't have to pay you a lot because everybody wants to live there. So there's just not enough jobs. Wow. Every market is saturated. It's not like Houston, where there's just jobs readily available. It's it's Austin. Everybody wants to work there. And because of that, they don't have to pay you a diddly squat. So when I was done, I was like, yeah, no, this is not going to work for me. Just by taking the job in Houston, I increased my salary by 100%. And the cost of living is like half. Yeah. So to me, that was like a four-time swing. Woo. So... Houston it was, and my family's here, so yeah. I'm home. <laughs> Cheers to that. Yes. Cheers. Cheers.